What is going on, everybody? I am your host, Slackers, bringing you our next matchup in the Ultimate Smash Bros. DLC Tournament. So if you're new and you're wondering what this is, you're stumbling across it somehow. Maybe the thumbnail caught your eye or whatever, I don't know. But uh, if you're wondering what it is, it's basically a tournament that me and my community put together of 72 potential characters uh, that could be in Smash Ultimate through the means of DLC or their fighter pass or whatever it might be. So um, how does it work? Basically, each day on my channel, except for Sundays, I upload one matchup from the tournament, and uh, then we kind of go over the tournament. I give a f or the matchup, and then I kind of give some pros for the character, why they might make a pretty decent sense for uh, uh, Smash Bros. and DLC and that sort of stuff. And then the way to vote, and because that's how we do it, you vote for who you'd rather see, move on, and to, you know, eventually uh, we'll get... Well, a winner of the whole thing, but the, the whole idea of each matchup, obviously, you vote for who you'd rather see as a DLC character in Smash Ultimate. So you vote down in the comments by simply typing the name of one of the two characters that are in the matchup for the day. So, pretty simple. One vote per person. Either vote for character A, character B, or you can vote both. That is totally fine. It is fine. So, um... Yeah, uh, other than that, double elimination tournament, meaning characters to lose two times. You lose once, drop to the loser bracket, you lose from there, you're done. Ever tie in the voting, I flip a coin on camera. It's the fairest way to break the tie, so that's how we would settle that. And uh, each matchup voting lasts for just one week, that way the tournament keeps on rolling smoothly, and we will end up, well, getting fresh matches, and uh, yeah, that's how that goes. So... With all that out of the way, we finally get to uh, kind of get into the episode. So we get to go over the results from last Saturday, which was game 18, which was Agumon taking on Hat Kid. And uh, this one is a little uh, closer than I expected. I still pretty much knew, or I had a feeling who I thought would win this one, and it wasn't, uh, didn't surprise me, but the, I mean, I guess the overall outcome. So Agumon ended up winning 27 votes to 17, but... I mean, hey, Hat Kid, this was uh, Hat Kid's first appearance in any of my tournaments. And, uh, you know, there's quite a, there, there's a few people in the comment section that uh, were talking uh, some pretty good stuff about Hat Kid. And um, somebody even went over a potential moveset with, like, how the or badges and abilities and uh, whatever else could work. So uh, there's definitely some potential there for Hat Kid, absolutely. But sadly, Hat Kid falls a little bit short. So Hat Kid loses, drops the loser bracket. One more loss for Hat Kid, and done. So that's how that works. So congrats to Agumon moving on in the winner's bracket. But with that being said, we get to go over the, uh, well, not go over, well, kind of go over. Well, anyway, it's the next matchup in the uh, tournament, which is Skull Kid. Yes, the assist trophy. We have assist trophies in here. It's a fun tournament. But uh, Skull Kid taking on Octoling, who would probably wind up, if Octoling were to be in, probably a Echo Fighter. And yeah, we already know that, you know, this Nintendo and Sakurai said um, the Fighter Pass is probably going to be, you know, brand new characters uh, that they build from scratch, meaning no Echo Fighters. I'm still, I'm not expecting it to happen, but I'm still, I still wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they were like, oh, by the way, you know, free update character, here's a, here's an Echo Fighter. I could see that sort of happening for potentially Octoling. I mean, Splatoon 2. Uh, well, Splatoon series in general is uh, rapidly becoming one of Nintendo's biggest and most popular franchises. Uh, it was a massive hit. Yes, even on the Wii U, it was a massive hit. And Splatoon 2 ended up uh, coming out very early in the uh, Nintendo Switch's life cycle. Sold extremely well. Keeps getting uh, DLC. Uh, I don't know if it's gotten any DLC recently, but it, was, it kept getting pumped uh, with brand new DLC story modes and all sorts of different stuff. But, uh, so you can definitely say Octoling would be, you know, popular. You could probably check that box off and move set, whichever way you want to go. So if you want to say Octoling would probably be an Echo Fighter, well, you already know the move set then. But you could also kind of go a different route with Octoling. You could ma make them their own sort of unique. I mean, there's all sorts of different weapons in the Splatoon universe. So you could do, I'd, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you got... I, like, I can't remember all of them, but you got, like, splat, not splatter, but, well, splat dualies. There's so many different weapons. I wish I would have wrote down a list of them, but you can do, you know, all sorts of different items and, uh, zoom in, please. Zoom in, please. Okay, don't zoom in. 
whatever, whatever. Uh, my mouse doesn't want to work, but uh, you can you can do all sorts of different uh, you know weapons from the Splatoon series to make Inkling or Inkling Octoling uh, their own sort of unique move set. So you can kind of take the character both ways. Honestly, you can go for the Echo Fighter route, you can go for the unique fighter routes, and I think it it would work and people would buy it. Like I said, Splatoon is very popular uh, and it's growing uh, rapidly. Got a big fan base. And I think people would be excited to see a, uh, you know, another potential, you know, rep from the Splatoon series. Plus to think of all the uh, potential, I guess, uh, alternate skins that you could have. Because Inkling has some tremendous alternate skins with the male and female version of uh, the Inklings. So potentially having some more awesome, you know, looks and gear and that sort of stuff for Octolings would be absolutely awesome, in my opinion. So, I mean, the character's pretty much got it all. It's 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 another Inkling sort of character. Uh, Moveset-wise, I guess, you know, height, uh, hitbox, all that sort of stuff, pretty, pretty similar, if not the same. So, overall, I think the character does make sense in a way, but does uh, the character make enough sense to be in the fighter pass? Um, I don't know, with the Joker, and I'm going to have a revised, um, uh, I guess, Smash uh, Fighter Pass prediction coming out sometime in the next few days, because I think that now that I see Joker and see I, the way the Joker plays, I truly feel Nintendo's really going to go in a weird direction with this, and uh, truly it's going to be characters we're not going to expect and, you know, we're not going to see coming. But, uh, yeah, that's it for Octoling, so let's move on to Octoling's opponent, Skull Kid. Yes, this is trophy. Again, remember this this tournament's for fun. If you, <clears throat> excuse me. If you like Skull Kid, you can vote for Skull Kid. If you don't like Skull Kid because it's an assist trophy and doesn't deserve to be upgraded and playable, vote for Octoling. That's uh, you know that's fair. So um, anyway, Skull Kid was definitely one of the top. I'd probably say top five most talked about characters or speculated characters to be in Smash Ultimate before the game released. Uh, there's uh, tons of different you know fakes. I don't know why I did quotations because they were fake, but there's all sorts of fakes that were popping up. You know, so many people were talking about it. A lot of people were thinking potentially Skull Kid could have got revealed around uh, October uh, for the, you know, Halloween sort of a spooky, uh, scary sort of character. And um, there's always the fact that Legend of Zelda needs a fresh face from the from the Zelda series in general. We already have 5,000 links. We have Zelda Sheik and then Ganondorf. Let's let's uh, let's mix it up. I get Link is popular. Don't get me wrong. I know Link is extremely popular, and there's all sorts of different variations of Link that you could come up with move sets for. But let's get a fresh face in there. Let's get somebody else in there. How about Skull Kid? Skull Kid is definitely a recurring character. Been in quite a few games. Um, the move set is pretty interesting. You could do a lot of stuff with uh, magic and stuff like that. Uh, there, I, so overall, I think you know, uh, when you talk about characters, you always got to talk about the big three. You know popular relevant move set popular skull kid yes in the smash community big time popularity yes check uh move set easy to come up with absolutely check relevant it's in uh it's in zelda games check and um it is in smash uh ultimate again sadly but i don't know maybe maybe someday skull kid gets the uh the the promotion that uh i think skull kid kind of deserves honestly so I don't know. I, I just believe if if Skull Kid were to be revealed as a part of the Fighter Pass, and they would go with the you know the the assist trophy promotion, I think some people would get a little upset because you know well my character is an assist trophy didn't get promotion. Why did Skull Kid? And that might irk a little or, or quite a few people, but nonetheless, Skull Kid still would make a tremendous. Uh, rep make a tremendous you know addition to the roster so many people they just know who the character is people will buy that and that's what dlc is that's what nintendo's trying to do come up with these uh characters come up with you know well their dlc packs that people will buy because they well their business they want money that's how that goes so um for me uh i've always loved skull kid and uh the more i kind of think about how Octoling could work. I I like Octoling both both paths. You could do the Echo Fighter or the Unique Fighter. But for me, I definitely realize if it came between these two, Octoling probably has the better chance. To be honest, but um, I'm gonna vote Skull Kid. Skull Kid's always been one of those characters that I've always 
wanted. It's always been on my wish list, um, pretty high up on my wish list. So Skull Kid definitely gets my vote in this one. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Um, I guess we'll give you a little sneak peek for Monday's episode because, again, Sunday we do something different. We got Spirit Board Sunday, brand new spirits. Going to go over that, well, tomorrow. And then another episode of Do They Have a Chance. Still have no idea what character I'm going to talk about tomorrow. I'll figure it out. But, uh, yeah, we got uh, two different uploads uh, tomorrow and then tournament resumes on Monday. But uh, the uh, the matchup for Monday is going to be Tracer from Overwatch taking on Kamek from uh, the Yoshi series. So it should be interesting to see how people kind of take to Kamek. But uh, we also get the results for Ninten against Conker. Uh, I'm very curious to see how this plays out, how many people uh, went with Conker. So, um that is going to be it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. I uh, look forward to the voting, as always, and hopefully catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.